Next we'll have uh, Jeremy Sharp. And please explain who you are. Um, all right, sir, I'm going to try to explain to who I am to give a little bit more authority on this matter. Uh, my name is Jeremy David Sharp. I'm 28 years old. I live in Dahlonega, Georgia. Um, I am the president and founder of the University of North Georgia Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Um, right now, I oversee six campuses in Georgia. Um, I also sit on the board of directors for the uh, uh, SSDP, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Um, we have chapters in seven, uh, seven countries and uh, 276 universities in 47 states. Um, our main concern is drug policy reform. Um, so far in Georgia, since the two years I've been active with this, um, I worked on the uh, 911 medical amnesty policy. Um, I played a pretty prominent part in that. Um, and so far with that law, we've had uh, 369 naloxin reversals in the last year and a half. Um, those are reversals due to heroin or opioid overdoses. Um, and so I'm in uh, pretty much uh, a lot of communities in the North Georgia area um, where drug use is prevalent. Um, I've also spent a lot of time studying youth drug trends, um, which I believe is one of the reasons that I've been asked to be here uh, for this meeting. Uh, at least is what it said in my email. Um, so I've, uh, I've, I've only had about 24 hours to do this uh, presentation, um, but I would like to say I'm very honored. Um, I'm speaking to the guardians of this republic, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the warrior class, um, because it is our duty to shine light into dark places. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to bring up my PowerPoint. I've got most of my information um, um, memorized. And I'd be happy to share my PDFs and resources with you guys uh, through email or paper. I've brought paper copies for it. Um, so far, um, in Georgia, um, marijuana arrests, just misdemeanor amounts of marijuana arrests, account for 7% of the total arrests in Georgia. Um, we arrested 43 uh, thousand people for marijuana possession in Georgia last year. Um, of those, 35,000 were misdemeanor only uh, possessions. Um, so about eight or nine uh, out of every uh, ten uh, possessions is a misdemeanor amount. Um, and so what I've come to speak on is a, a little bit about how uh, these nonviolent drug offenses um, are wrapping up our student populations. Um, I myself have been in the criminal justice system. Um, I actually went to jail 18 different times before I got into college. Um, mostly for technical violations, um, but I know the harms. I've been on the opposite diet, uh, side of those metal doors. Um, and I've seen a lot of my friends go to prison. Um, I've seen a lot of my friends die. And uh, I, I fervently believe that uh, our drug policies have, uh, have played a factor in those deaths and those uh, youths being sent to prison. Um, I grew up in Snellville, which is a, a pretty diverse place. And I'm here to speak because I saw my friends that were riding in a car with me who were um, uh, brown or black. Um, get unfairly prosecuted, get fairly, unfairly pushed around the criminal justice system. Um, I know I went to jail 18 times, but I think if I had been a different color, I would have gone to prison and would have ended up a different person. Um, and so I've uh, come to speak on the fact that the uh, Higher Education Act, which is a federal policy that was passed in 1998. Um, in 2010, my organization estimated that up to 200,000 people had been denied federal aid um, because of this act, um, it says if you get caught with any amount of drug, or did before two, 2006, you were ineligible. In 2006, they added an amendment which said um, if you get caught while receiving your pill grants, your federal aid, your FAFSA. Um, right now, we estimate that one in uh, 398 students each year loses their financial aid. Um, in Georgia, we have 312,000 students in our university. Um, and we estimate that 783 of them um, in this year will lose their financial aid because of uh, uh, drug possessions, mostly misdemeanor, small amounts of marijuana. Um, right now, the racial disparities in marijuana 
Um, in Fulton County, it's 87% uh, African Americans that are pulled over and arrested and jailed for misdemeanor amounts of marijuana. Um, DeKalb County, Georgia, from 2000 to 2010, saw a 459.5% increase in marijuana arrests, and uh, that demographic was mostly African Americans as well. Um, and so we, uh, we live in a city where we do have a, a lot of colleges, and we do have uh, prevalent use rates. Um, as a matter of fact, Georgia, with its draconian policies, is seeing the highest increase in teen usage and uh, marijuana rates under the age of 25. Uh, what's striking, though, is when we, have, uh, when we analyze states that have functioning medical marijuana programs, um, out of the 13 that we would consider functional marijuana programs, 11 of those states have seen a, uh, a decrease in youth usage rates. Um, also, uh, youth uh, use under the age of 25 make up 48% of marijuana arrests. Um, and so this is affecting my college friends. Um, I'm a little bit older. Um, I believe it's you know, my duty to kind of uh, show people the right path, get them on the right path. Um, but I currently have three friends that are at risk for losing their financial aid. Um, they come from all different spectrums. Um, but the thing they have in common is uh, they can't afford the good lawyers. Um, they can't afford um, you know, the justice. I, I think the system in this, in this country, you get as much justice as you can pay for. And um, that's an opinion. Um, but I came to uh, testify how it's affecting youth in particular. Um, I've spent an extensive amount, again, studying drug trafficking trends among, amongst youth, in particular in Atlanta. Uh, we work diligently to get naloxone into the hands of people who are at risk. Um, so far we have 30 different police agencies that are signed up administering naloxone. Um, the thing about medical marijuana is you don't overdose on it. Um, I've seen people, uh, paraplegics, cancer patients, um, all types of different uh, aspects of patients who use marijuana medicinally because it's safer than the benzodiaprines, it's safer than the opioids, it's safer than the CNS depressants, it's safer than everything else, and it helps them. And what harms them is the illegal market. Um, I've seen people get ripped off, I've seen people get robbed, I've seen medical patients, grandmothers, um, you know, put in situations that they didn't need to be in, and they're out searching for, for a solution um, granted, cancer and a terminal illness is no laughing matter, and when we're sending our grandparents into uh, bad neighborhoods and bad places to procure medicine, it's, uh, it's almost criminal. Um, I've come here to offer my help, and please forgive my nervousness, and uh, if I seem a little bit disoriented, or um, it's only the second time I've done this kind of stuff before. Um, but being with Students for Sensible Drug Policy, uh, we have connections throughout the entire world. Um, we can offer you uh, anywhere, anybody from the marijuana industry, medical marijuana patients, producers, consumers, uh, the business, the, uh, the, 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 the billionaires, the people that are making the money. Um, you know, I, I wasn't paid to be here. Um, and one thing I would like to encourage too before I do leave is I look elsewhere in, in the country um, I'm not seeing uh, our minority populations play, uh, play a prominent role in this new industry. Um, you know, my organization is headed completely by women. We're seeing women take a good thing, but um, I think you guys need to make sure that as this stuff comes along, we're not getting left behind either. Absolutely. Thank you.